The two of you have been longtime collaborators. How did this partnership initially form? Well, it started with, I think our first script that we wrote together was something called I Suck. That was probably four years ago. And then we didn't end up making it because we required too much of a budget. So we got the idea for Clairvoyant in 2019. Yeah. And that was really something that we could make on our own. It was mockumentary format, didn't take much money. Everyone, I think everyone and their mother knows at this point that it costs like $3,000 to make. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was the way, the foray into our partnership. And then we realized that we worked really well together and we just kind of kept going. Clairvoyant has made its way around the festival circuit. Like you're saying, it's been incredibly well received. What do you think is resonating most with audiences? And what has that response meant to both of you as creatives? Um, Michaela and I, I think, have an empathy for a lot of people that you end up seeing a lot in your life, people that, yeah. that you know that most writers in Hollywood could not give a second care about. They don't, nobody's really concerned with that yoga girl who talks too much to you, like as you're leaving class, you know, what's going on in her life? How sad is she? You know, what, what makes her gears turn? But um, I think that's why Clairvoyant really appeals. It's like this sort of unscratched itch for a lot of people. We're very, we're very boots on the ground. I think we've both felt like Hollywood outsiders for so long that we haven't really had the brains of writers. We've more so had the brains of just normal people who enjoy writing. So I think that brings a sort of relatability to a lot of our mm. work. Yeah, definitely. You know, in addition to that film, you also recently gave a sneak peek of Remy and Arlena to Outfest. You know, this is an incredibly personal story for you. Can you talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the film and that writing process? Um, oh yeah, that's, that's a big question. I think it was just a story that was bubbling up within me for so long. And I wrote it in the middle of quarantine and I just like, First of all, I was bored. We were all bored um, and Clairvoyant had already come out and I just, I wanted more. And I was like, what can I give the world that I haven't given it yet? And I thought it was important to tell this story. I had never told it. I'm a very shy person. No one knows about it. And so the inspiration was just there. The inspiration was my entire life. So, yeah. And then I'll out there for you, what did you learn from the set of Clairvoyant that you've been able to apply to this film? Um, God, that is a good question. Um, I think Clairvoyant taught me most of all that the actor and their, their sort of, uh, how, their, how the actor is feeling today is more important than the scene or the lines. It's really weird, but like mm. you kind of have to fit the shoot to interface what, you know, it's kind of like having like an MVP, like a, like a player on a sports team. Like you need, as a coach, you really have to figure out what can they do today? How should we change it? How should we get them to, to exactly where I need them to be, you know, uh, in maybe an untraditional way. That's really what I learned from Clairvoyant and just doing that as fast as possible, just Getting, getting straight to, to, to the meat and potatoes with them, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I learned that like Clairvoyant. Because we only had like an hour in a lot of those <laughs> like Clairvoyant. I just wanted to, okay. Uh, Michaela, during the writing process, did you have these particular actors in mind? Casting was, I think, the most exciting part of the process because that's when it starts to feel real. You write these words and you're like, maybe no one's ever going to say it. Maybe it's never going to come to life. But then you bring talented actors into the room and you start seeing just how talented they are. And I didn't have them in mind when I was writing it, but it's funny, we actually auditioned all the guys in the movie, they auditioned for the role of Kiefer and they were all so good that I I did start writing them roles. Yeah, so you're right, I actually did. I wrote them in, even if it was just a couple lines, I was like, these guys are so talented, I gotta get them in, in here somehow. Yeah. Arthur, in addition to directing and producing, you, you also have experience in front of the camera as an actor. How has that lent itself uh, as you stepped into the director and producing chair? Uh, acting is um, really brave. It's really scary. And uh, I think at the end of the day, the actors have this sort of energetic, or at least the production has an energetic debt to actors because 
after everything, you need them to perform. You need them, like the whole thing rides on these guys who need to act like, like this is really happening. And, uh, you know, I learned that being an actor, you know, and making a lot of mistakes. And, and it's, it's terrifying. Being an actor is so much harder, dude. Like it's, really scary. it's horrific. It's a nightmare. You have to prove yourself in like two seconds. You have to prove, you know, <laughs> like you need to, dude, the, 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 the logistics, we've all grown desensitized. Like it's a normal thing, but to just like go into a room, this cold beige room and like cry in front of four people. And sometimes like a couple of those people are like, just kind of like, gonna be mean to you anyway just because they're having a bad day you know you have to just like pull every single thing that's ever happened to you out and 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 vomit it up in front of these strangers so that they can give you the option of coming back to do it again later maybe and then maybe then you get to do it on the movie horrific terrible <laughs> actors are incredible they're amazing dude I, so I guess that's, yeah i learned that yeah, perfect segue to this next question, but there's so many emotional moments within this film. Author, as the director, how do you create the space for the actors to explore those moments? And Michaela, from an acting standpoint, how do you prepare for those scenes in particular? I think I could say a lot on how amazing Arthur is as a director, but I guess I'll, I'll leave that one for him. Um, how do I create space? God, that's such an interesting question. I think I just kind of stress out about it until it's time to go for it <laughs> and you just hope it goes okay that's really the only answer I have like a lot of the scenes in Remy and Arletta were really dark and really intense yeah. and you can't prepare for that because then you're just going to be in a terrible headspace for a longer amount of time than you need to be so you just learn your lines and you hope and pray that it's going to go okay for the one hour you have to shoot it and and then it does <laughs> I mean, she's a natural, you know, like really, really, really like on a dime, you know, um, you can, you can pretty much. So anyways, you guys will see, but, uh, preparing them is just making it not feel stupid. You know, I think there's a way for, uh, especially on set for some reason, every now and then it's almost like when a crowd isn't, um, vibing with a musical act, you know, you can really feel that where the lyrics mean nothing suddenly because the energy is wrong. And if you can make sure that the energy is right, that the vibe is right, that even like the most cynical lighting guy who's like, you know, covered in tattoos and is there, like, like even him, if, if you can get him to believe in what's happening a little bit and just make, give, give them space. Um, everyone, that's how you everyone will elevate the story together. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then the actors just do their, it's so easy at that point. The actors just do their thing, you know? This is such an incredible film. When it comes out, is there a scene in particular that you're each excited for audiences to see? And what do you hope they take away after? The scene that I love the most is the darkest scene in the movie. I don't know what that says about me. Maybe that's weird, but I just think it was so raw and we, and we really did it. You know, Amy, yeah. had, Amy had to hit me. And I think that that's, as, as intense as it is, I think that's really important in film to display those real life hardships. Um, and maybe people can see that and connect to it and they'll say, oh, I'm not the only one that went through it. Someone else went through it and now they're making a movie about it so I can get past it. That's, that's kind of my greatest hope. Um, for me, maybe, I don't know, man, you know, maybe the key first scene, I just like the whole movie right now. The only thing I'm thinking about is just the whole film, I think will make it, yeah, just make all that pain worth it. I, that's what mm -hmm. I hope to do for so many regular people who have been through so many things like this. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of media that makes it feel like your life. I feel like a lot of media makes you feel like, oh, I wish I could just get a do over, just like quick game restart, you know? And uh, there's not a lot of media about just like figuring, like taking, taking the slings and arrows and actually making them work for you. And so I hope that we can make their days easier. I, I do, you know, I hope that they connect to it. And it makes the rest of their life easier in a way, a little, just a little. It definitely will. I got one final question for the two of you. As this partnership has grown, how have you been able to challenge each other as artists and storytellers? And then what's next for the two of you? You go. Oh, um, yo, man, Michaela had to like, 
rip me apart and build me back up. Um, you know, that's kind of what you have to do. You, uh, when, when you're, we really, really, really are dedicated to this. Like, this is the only thing we eat, sleep, breathe. So, you know, all that baggage and all that stuff just had to work through it. You know, you can't have the authority to tell, once again, regular people how to live their lives or what to do. If you haven't done that work and figured out something, at least like have something to bring to the table where you had the luxury to figure that stuff out for them a little bit, you know? Yeah. And as far as what's next, I mean, as I said, I think to, um, to answer your first question, we were, we were in the process of writing a script right before we hopped on this call. So we're writing something called night on the town. We have a bunch of completed scripts. We're just kind of trying to shop them around and see what gets funding and see what we want to throw ourselves into the ditches for next. Yeah, no, I mean, this was, you know, clairvoyant was kind of a mockumentary. So it was like, kind of like not a real movie in a way, you know, just a camcorder. It's hard to get Hollywood people excited about that. But this is a real movie. Uh, this is really a fictional, beautiful, like it's pretty people, you know, it, it feels like a, like a film film. And uh, so it's been way easier with way more interest. Honestly, kind of dream come true, but now we don't know what to do. <laughs> we don't know, like, yeah, we, we're kicking around three or four ideas, like you said, and I don't know, whichever, we'll figure, it, it'll, it'll present itself. It'll be easy, you know? So yeah.